Good evening and welcome to The Square. Tonight's discussion is going to focus on the new property tax law and the implications this tax law has on land and property owners as well as the implication it has on boosting domestic revenue in Rwanda's quest to be a self-sufficient country. We are joined here, thank you very much for joining us, we are joined here from the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning by Jonathan Nzaikorera who is the Division Manager Fiscal Decentralization. Thank yeah. you for honoring our invite. Thank you too. Great. My name is Dan Pisi. I'm part of The Square. As always, I'm joined by my resident panelists. On mm -hmm. my left, we have Ephraim Ramwenye. Welcome Thank to The Square. Thank you for having me. And as always, we are here with Charlie Haber. Dan, how are you? Good. Yes. So this is an interesting and a timely topic, I believe. And uh, like we always do in The Square, just before we get into the subject, we're just going to have a brief midweek recap. And uh, Ephraim, I'll start with you briefly. It's been an interesting week so far. There are many, there are many highlights. I'll, I think I'll talk about the... Um, the, the fact, because we've talked about it before in the square, mm -hmm. about the, the opening up of the 60% discount of the apartments in Vision City to, to civilians. Uh, I find it particularly interesting. We've talked about this before, um, that it missed the mark the first time, um, because it didn't take into consideration that the government employees that they were targeting, especially in terms of rank, could not afford uh, some of these mortgages. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting to see the, the turn of events. Do you think you're eligible? I think I am actually. Is it? But Good. the question is not about whether I am, it's whether I will uh, seek that opportunity. Interesting. Yeah. Charles, briefly. No, I'm, I think in the interest of time, mm. I just want to build on what um, my friend is saying and just mention only one thing. In as far as that discount is concerned, from the onset, mm. they did not have to reduce the houses by an entire 60%. I rest my case. Huh. Conversation for another, yes. another day on the, on the square. <laughs> yeah. so, Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us um, on this very interesting and timely discussion on the new property tax law. Uh, and my first question to you and my resident panelists uh, will also chip in, is mm. to do with just understanding the rationale. And uh, we, are, we are aware that um, this tax law was passed uh, by parliament uh, in August. Yes. And uh, it's also a revision of, of the law that started in, in uh, 2017, December. And uh, the, it's rationale that we are aware of so far is to f provide basic infrastructure and other services to citizens by districts because of increased revenues, mm. as always to promote efficient land use. Mm. Um, but can you expound on this? And yeah. also while you expound on it, if you can give us the level of consultations that were made mm. also with the private sector. Okay. Thank you, Diana and the uh, colleagues mm. uh, for inviting me to this, to give those who are following Square which is an important show I also personally follow, so oh, I believe so many people are following up. <laughs> and it's uh, an important opportunity to explain to those who are following us on yes. how what is embedded in the new law. One clarification I want to make, there is no property tax law. Mm -hmm. Somehow, it is a law establishing the source of income for decentralized entities. Why I'm making it, it may be this, it's mm -hmm. maybe those who want to search for the Gazette diversion, to know the proper title of the law, okay. but it ha also it has so many other taxes and other source of income for the centralized entity. So it's a clarification I want to make. Okay. Proper tax is one of the revenues for the centralized entities. Mm. When I come back to this uh, proper tax, maybe there is a reason why it is being called proper tax mm. law. Mm. The major reform is about the property tax, mm. which we uh, will talk about maybe this evening. When I talk of the rationale for the property tax law, they, there are like three or four major important uh, policy objectives around this reform. One is, of course, mobilizing resources for the central entities. But for financing, the basic needs they need to give to citizens, including the basic infrastructures. Uh, the central entities are there to provide services to citizens. But the most important one, Currently, they are struggling, especially when it comes to infrastructures, because they are heavily relying on the central government transfers. With their self-sustainability, it's not wa working out. When we commissioned the study, one of the areas where there were potential, there were some property tax as an area to tap in. And maybe quickly, let me touch on why maybe a direct correlation between infrastructures and the proper tax, and maybe benefit owners who pay the, that tax benefit. Mm -hmm. One thing, 
whenever the government have any public infrastructure, a hospital, a road, something, the value of your property, be it land, be it a house, its value changes without you changing it. So there is a direct benefit whenever the government invests in the basic infrastructure through this tax. Now the question is maybe to look at around that one. The purpose, ah, now, now government is raising more resources, but how about those who can be adversely affected? So many actual aspects have been uh, thought about in this law, including the important one, exempting one residential house, at least for every Rwandan. At least those who are following us should know, at least everyone is entitled to an exemption for one residential house, irrespective of the value. Mm. Secondly, the majority of the land in rural areas, it's reserved for agriculture activities. Mm -hmm. A land below two hectares is also exempted from this tax. So, a number of other incentives... Because two hectares is yeah, small? Yeah, small. Okay. It's small. It's small. Mm -hmm. So then, even above, mm -hmm. each hectare above, it's a small amount, like 4,000 per hectare per year. So it's relatively a small amount to make sure that there are no, no other people who are adversely affected by this reform. A second policy objective is about uh, maybe efficient land use. When uh, we talk of efficient land use, there was actually a debate in the leadership retreat of 2015 where this issue came up. Where about now, as the country develops, there is a tendency that even the land uh, is marked for other activities, including agriculture, being used for construction. Mm. Okay, there are so many debates around it, but much as with the, the small surface of our country we know, if we continue doing the way we are building, there is a negative impact maybe for the generation to come. True. So this in, uh, new role encourages in maybe people to build the vertical where there are special rates for those who build in apartments. Mm -hmm. Third element, people don't misuse maybe land or use in, inefficiently maybe, and they may not use in, uh, misuse. Mm -hmm. When there are even those who buy land and don't develop, maybe for speculation. Mm. Because there is maybe I can hear tomorrow something will be developed in a certain location. You go there, you buy a certain loan, the land, then you don't develop. Implication it has. How about those citizens who were there, who are just maybe chased away? Sometimes they go and create slums somewhere. Or but when yourself you don't develop there is a negative economic impact on the country. So those who also own and develop land, they are being actually sent a message in this law. You need to do something on your land. Mm. And the last one is promoting the commercial and uh, maybe industrial building. For the commercial building, we've made some studies in other countries. In most countries, actually all of, all of them, commercial and industrial building are taxed higher than the residential buildings for us. It's a, a reverse way. Because you want to promote those commercial buildings and industrial ones, so that in line with our made in, made in Rwanda policy, at least our industries can be more competitive. So, from all this combination of various policy objectives, the new property tax law has two, uh, two components a land tax, which is a, a, a area based, that you pay a certain uh, amount per square meter based on actually what the land is used and the location. Then the second component. On an annual basis. Yes, on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Then the second component is the building uh, tax, which is a certain a value-based kind of approach. It's a certain percentage of the market value of your, of your building. I forgot another important uh, maybe policy objective around this reform, mm. which is about actually address implementing the current law. There were some, so many inefficiencies, including even inequity in them. Currently, the way we are taxing the property tax, it's based on ownership regime. Now, if I have a freehold title, I was paying only the property tax. Where those who are on a lease contract were paying what we call the land lease fee. Now, the implication or what we call inequity, two people with properties of the same market value were paying differently. And more, more about that, Actually, people were not having incentive to go and apply for, for their freehold titles. Because you go for the freehold title, then you fall into the tax bracket. So basically, this inefficiency, all over the world, nowhere the property is taxed or non-ownership. It was only Rwanda 
whereby ownership was taken into consideration during the taxation. That one is removed. Where the, you have a freehold title or that, it's actually, you have to pay that. And why maybe people did not even notice the proper tax was there? It is because only 2% were paying that tax. Because actually most of our uh, people... 2% of landowners across no, no, the country? Yeah, across the country, yes. The statistics you have, only 2% were actually having a freehold title. Others were not having some incentive to go for it because it br bring them to the taxes. So that's briefly what I can say about the that's policy uh, very objectives. very detailed, I think, in terms of time yeah. um, and informative information. Yeah. Charles, would you like to weigh in here? Yeah, I, I, I want to pick on, on, on two things and um, I'm one of the few people, first of all, I think for purposes of emphasis, it's important that our viewers know that I'm in the real estate business. So, <laughs> wow. so I, I, I am fairly uh, uh, conversant with historical, current and uh, uh, goings on. But you see, uh, Jonathan raises ex and something extremely important around uh, uh, ownership regimes. And sometimes it's important to break it down into very, very simple terms. Mm -hmm. When you talk about 2% of the Rwandans owning freehold title, actually it's not 2% of the Rwandans, it's 2% it's, it's of, of, of all land. property, mm -hmm. land and buildings yes, being yes. freehold. Now, it meant that only 2% of all the properties mm. that were registered in Rwanda mm. were paying tax. Yes. Can you imagine how much revenue this government has been losing out? But I'll take it a notch higher and tell you that the other 98% had leases, leases on the land, land that they would improve and put buildings on oh, top of it. And the lease expires. And they would, and the, but the lease continues being just for the land, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. irrespective of the improvement. Mm. Exactly. And they still get that lease for the land, mm -hmm. take it to a bank, mortgage it, exactly. and still pay only ground rent. Mm -hmm. So the huge, uh, and I might be crucified after this show, mm -hmm. the huge loss that the government was, was, was suffering was had to come to 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 but to to, to a standstill. To, 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 yes, to had to come to a standstill. Yes. Is saying, yes. Um, statistics show, uh, and this was uh, advisement under the International mm. Monetary Fund, mm. that we actually were doing. It was very low compared to the region and also globally speaking. Not really but wrong, but wrong. So to, to yeah, it, it was totally wrong. But in, in addition to that, I'll take mm. it a notch higher and say, mm. do you know how much ground rent is in Rwanda? You'd find that somebody has the the annual rent. Yes, yes. Because you lease, therefore yes. you rent yes. from government. Yes. And yes. the owner yes. of the yes. land is government and therefore you have to pay rent. Yes. yes. Now you'd find for argument's sake here in Kachur where RBA is, mm -hmm. if you have land the size of where RBA sits, mm -hmm. you can find you're paying as little as three hundred thousand francs. A year, mm. yes, for such prime land. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, no, so the premise mm. was right, and uh, and I think Jonathan, mm. it's, yes. it's it's extremely right that mm. uh, that government has woken up mm. to say that no 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 we, we we can get a little bit more. But mm. uh, uh, just to play devil's advocate here, but again, I want to play yeah. devil's advocate <laughs> on your behalf. No, I, let me just finish this point before you, before you finish uh, uh, before you come in a frame. Uh -huh. uh, we are lucky that we we'll work and live in a government that works. Mm -hmm. When we pay our taxes, we see where that money goes. Mm -hmm. Roads are done, hospitals are there, Mutuel is there, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I belong to so many groups, family, friends, and what have you, and we've been arguing so much about this thing. And I just realized one thing, that it is poor communication mm -hmm. or lack of information that makes people think that the, that, that the taxes have been increased. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So I want to play a devil's advocate in relation to, um, to the change of these um, uh, ownership rights. Mm. You know, when you talk about the difference between a freehold title and, uh, and a land leasehold, yeah, mm. leasehold mm. Um, and I'm talking from a layman's perspective, from yes, my little so. education about yes. Uh, this stuff mm -hmm. is that at some point the lease expires. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that the ownership or at least the, the rights to the land are not in perpetuity. They're not 
forever. I will just inform, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just educate mm -hmm. you on that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. The only circumstance mm -hmm. under which the lease would not be renewed mm -hmm. is if you choose not to renew it. So, but now my question, yes. my question, my question mm -hmm. then comes in because, you know, on average you find some, in some countries, the lease, most of the leases are 99 years. Um, depending on the, the nature. For residential, mm -hmm. 99. I know some countries, they'll say if it's commercial, it's 50. Mm -hmm. But then the question I have is, don't we see an implication where we are creating this, um, where, where we're fostering, this, by changing these rights, instead of addressing the aspect of, of mm -hmm. the lease fees mm -hmm. and ensuring that the government can collect more mm -hmm. on leasehold land. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're creating a situation where it becomes a situation where there's a generational um, how can I describe it? Mm. There's a generational aspect to land ownership. Instead of creating this sense of equity, just because you were born at this particular time, in this partic at this particular period, and your parents or your, yourself, you're able to get a, free, a freehold title, mm. that it's in your family for perpetuity. I, and that's for me is the question I'm asking. Aren't we necessarily looking at a short-term benefit of taxes versus a long-term aspect of creating some sort of equity in our economy? for asset ownership. It's no, Ephraim, Ephraim. But, but can you let Jonathan answer, let, let, let him, I, I, let him I, answer that I, from I, an I, expert he, perspective? He answers it from a very technical <laughs> no, perspective, I want but to I want to answer it in a very practical <laughs> perspective. <laughs> yes, Ephraim, <laughs> it is everybody's right to own freehold, especially Randy's. Mm. Definitely. Uh, Everybody's like, right. Yeah. But is there enough Even to go you. around? Yeah. Yeah, but no, 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 you can wake up today, Ephraim, for the house that you own in 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 Chimirong, that has been on lease and apply for a freehold, and you will get your freehold. Okay, Charles and uh, a friend. Yes. Uh, first of all, our guest is here. Uh, mm. And I know Charles, whenever it comes <laughs> to real estate or housing, he takes over. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for your inputs. I'd just like to, the guest to get back in answering Ephraim's question. Yes. But before we do, uh, again, for the sake of our audiences, I yes. want us to really be, uh, to speak, we're speaking to the lay people. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Can you just briefly clarify land uh, lease? You know, mm. when you have land and it's a, uh, what you just uh, spoke about, freehold free 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 and leaseholding, the, the difference between the two. Actually, for the, for the benefits of, the, or, of those who are yeah, the audience, yes. let me put it actually in simple practical terms. Exactly. What does the owner of the freehold get or cannot get vis-a-vis -vis the one who has? Actually, in the simple terms, mm -hmm. one is a step before another, mm -hmm. especially for one, this like Chelsea has said. Nothing stops you for example, if it is a residential land, mm. it is a, for you to have the freehold. Mm -hmm. You first have to have constructed that land, mm -hmm. you get occupation permit, then you apply for this. There is just a certain process, mm. you get that one. But then in the practical terms, mm. let us see if the owners of the land lease are not have getting some rights which the owners of the freehold are not getting, uh, maybe are having. For example, you use the mortgage. Mm. You take your land uh, title mm. to the bank, whether it has 22 years or 99. Mm. Assume your point, maybe it is maybe close to expire. Mm. What happens? Mm. Does your maybe land or other improvements have maybe some wheels to move? Mm -mm. In any case, mm -hmm. the land will be to you. Mm. The government will actually renew. That's why even the banks have never considered Telling me if there is a single case whereby mm. the bank has refused. Ah, now I can sue. Mm. Your land is contract is expiring. Mm. Therefore, I'm not taking this as a collateral. Mm. This has never happened. Mm. So actually, this encourages people to go and apply for their freehold. Uh, freehold title. So your question about the generation. Actually, this imbalance between the people who are enjoying the rights, but when it comes to tax obligation, mm. ah, they run away from it. We are bringing in some equity oh, element. Oh, oh, oh. I, I want to, to just tap on uh, what you said about people being adversely effect, affected yes. uh, by this, this law. Mm. Uh, and I wanted to talk, uh, to just basically ask you a question. In simple terms, mm. uh, most people who had land were probably middle income um, citizens. So what mm. happens to them uh, when they have these parcels of land or plots of land, so to speak, uh, and, and failure to develop these pieces of land in the required period happens and they can't pay the tax? What, what, what do you... What happens to these people? By the way, what is the punitive measure? So by to speak? the way, before the land, maybe this property tax come in. Mm. These contracts we get with the government on the back of them, mm. there is a certain period where you have 
to use the land for the purpose you've acquired for. So let me just give you an example yes. to simplify mm. it. Imagine, and you can weigh in here, yes. Charles, as, mm. the, as a real estate expert. Yes. I have a piece of land. Yes. Um, and let's say my worth is, I don't know, 50 mm. million. Yes. For instance. Mm. And I acquired this land and finalized my uh, the acquiring of this land mm -hmm. in, let's say, 2016. Yes. Let's say next year, 2019, in mm. June, mm -hmm. I have just barricaded it. I've just set a perimeter. Mm -hmm. I have not built on it uh, based on the permit that I got to, whether it's residential, whether it's mm -hmm. commercial, I've not yet done that. But mm. every end of year, mm. at, on an annual basis, I have to pay this property tax. So mm. number one, I fail to develop it because maybe I don't have the money in mm -hmm. this required time. And then on top of mm. failing to develop it, um, mm. I also am unable to pay that tax on an annual basis. Mm. What happens to me and other people in this situation? Okay. Based on this new law. First of all, I'm not encouraging those to have land and not develop it. Mm. It has other implications, even but on themselves. Mm. Mm. But what happens to them, should any circumstance actually make this happen? Mm -hmm. The law has provided actually various measures. One, assume at the end of that year, you are financial in difficulties that not, you cannot pay. Mm -hmm. You request to the local authorities, that is the council of uh, that particular location where and you tell them, I'm having some issues for paying. Okay. You ask for deferring that tax liability, maybe to a certain period where you believe, or you ask for a waiver. Should you believe you have a reason to request for And that this can waiver. be granted? It is. Then it's in the council to assess okay. what are your reasons for application, and then they can answer. Provided you've requested that before the deadline for paying that. So, in any case, should you face some uh, maybe situation under your, uh, beyond your control for, of not meeting your tax obligation, mm -hmm. you request that one, there is some treatment they make for you. Okay. Or you ask to pay <coughs> in, in installments. Okay. I, I want to say one of the positive things that, uh, that is coming out of this law and uh, related to the ownership regimes. A, a, a leasehold and a freehold, I'll just liken it to somebody who owns a car, mm -hmm. another person who rents a car. Mm -hmm. If you have a lease on your land, you're only a tenant mm -hmm. of, on that property. Because it's owned by government. Yes. yes. This is the clarification. Yes. Yes. You're only a tenant mm -hmm. on that property. Yes. yes. But if you have freehold, you fully own, own that, that property. property. Yeah. Exactly. Now, mm -hmm. it is foolhardy of anybody to remain a tenant, mm. yet the government gives you full rights. The law mm. gives you full rights mm. to, to, to wholly own that property. Mm. So that is number one. So with the exception of foreigners mm. uh, and uh, maybe the usage of the land, if it's yeah, agricultural yes, yes. or... Uh, a protected yes, area, a like protected a park, area, yes, kind yes, of. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the exception of those ones, if you're a Rwanda national, or your Rwandan business with at least 50% shareholding mm. of a Rwandan national. Mm. There is no reason whatsoever if you have property that is developed. Mm. There is no reason why you should be a tenant mm. of your own property. Now let me explain yes. to you why I've brought up my issues. Mm. You know what's happening in South Africa around land. Do you know what's happening yes. in South Africa? Mm -hmm. Africa? Where you have, this is historically, this is historically black owned land. Mm -hmm. That was confiscated somehow f by apartheid. through apartheid. Yes. Actually, it was way before apartheid. Okay. Colonial. Colonial, yes, through colonial, mm. um, through colonial powers and, and the colonial structures. Mm. I'm coming to that point. Uh -huh. So now what ended up mm. happening is that mm -hmm. when the apartheid government came into power, mm -hmm. they implemented this freehold um, regime in terms mm -hmm. of ownership of rights. Mm -hmm. So you find that a lot of the current landowners inherited this land from the from their parents. Now what's happening is now, the question is how do you, because this land is not owned by government, how mm. do you then rightfully get, give this land back to, to the people it was taken from in the first place? Because these people have freehold titles. Now I'm bringing this up because on, one, on simple, a simple mm -hmm. basis, right? Mm -hmm. Charles, everybody has a right to own mm -hmm. property. So for example, let's say you and I, we decide and we go get freehold titles for the lands, the houses we're living in. Mm. And then, unfortunately, God forbid, one of our parents passes on, mm. or our parents pass on. They had their own freehold title and f they had a house. Mm. It's passed on to me, I inherited. Yes. Now the question then comes in is that, aren't we creating a situation where 
it, we, we, we are creating a, a certain level of, 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 of inequality that favors the elite instead of us creating an environment where at some point the government can, if they realize that, let's say the assets are being held by a few or are held reform, by a certain, they can come in quickly and say, okay, yes. let's redistribute this in this manner. And that's what I'm asking. I'm like, aren't we shooting ourselves in the foot looking at taxes only and not understanding that in 50 years or 60 years time that this might actually have an implication? Because of course, and, and this goes back to what you're saying about mm. generational ownership of assets. Mm. Yes. I think this is what your question mm. is. Exactly. We are looking right now at widening the tax base, mm. but 50 years from now, land in this country, uh, based on what mm. we are saying, well, one of the highly is going to be is going to be owned mostly mm. by government and the elite because of that generational continuation of asset ownership. I think I will what, come. What do you have to say to that? I will come back to maybe to what this row is collecting about the issues of land management. Yes. There, are, there should be a huge debate, and I'm actually mm. I'm not on your side about the element <laughs> of the <laughs> But let me speak to the, the tax. Yes. <laughs> Whether this tax is there or that, yeah. issues of land management, if they were there, that problem you are saying, it was still there. Mm. What we are saying, That's true. Mm. you shouldn't pay your tax based on that, that ownership regime, mm. because actually people with properties of the same value, mm. of the same rights and obligations, mm. how to pay equally. That's hey, what I'm agreed. saying. And we agree and on that. And then land management issues, maybe mm. they are there, maybe they are not there. Let's address it another way. But in terms of the taxation, I don't see yeah. how this is creating the problem you are saying. I would mm. say, I, would say well, I think we're in agreement on that. But just I quickly do, before we go for the break. Yes, yes, I think we're in agreement with that. I do believe we need to widen the tax base. But I'm saying that the way we are going about it is, cre might, is creating a problem for ourselves in the future that we have not foreseen. That's I, 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 I just not. want to put uh, two, two particular mm. things in context. One, by virtue of the fact that this, uh, the, this is going to be managed, these are local mm. government entities, they're yes. decentralized entities. Yes, yes. So by virtue of the fact that it's going to be dropped down to Break. district, mm. sector, cell, village, mm. Mm means that it will address the issue of those inequalities because the, the, the person in Gasa Arenda is not going to be treated the same way mm. as a person in Kachiro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they have different peculiarities. Mm. So that should allay your fears on one extent. But I want to emphasize, Ephraim, mm. that the acquisition of freehold rights mm. is a process. Yes. You first get a lease, mm. you develop that land, and once the authorities come and see that you, you develop that land in accordance with the permit, the permit or the construction for. permit yes. and blah, 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 mm -hmm. then they can give you your freehold rights. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 mm -hmm. yes, but however, that's it. And this is something mm -hmm. I think, Jonathan, when you go mm -hmm. back to your offices, you need to yes. correct. Mm -hmm. There are historical errors that were made mm -hmm. where even in Kigali and other urban settings, mm -hmm. you have people with freehold on undeveloped land. Okay. There's quite a number of cases yeah. there. Okay. And I think that really needs to be to, yeah. to, 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 to be addressed. Because that, 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 mm. that, that will uh, really... Uh, to allay uh, Ephraim's uh, concerns. Uh, uh, allay, uh, yes. concern. To a certain degree. Well, yes. we're, we're, going yes. to, we're going to the break. Uh, we're going for a brief break, yeah, but yeah. we'll be back on this uh, very sure, sure. interesting topic. Please stay tuned. We're here discussing the new property tax law. But I will come back and actually say it properly like you corrected us. It's not yeah. the new property tax law. Um, but we'll be back after the break. Please stay tuned.
we are here on the square tonight discussing the new property tax law and we are joined by Jonathan Nzaikorera from Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. My last question uh, before we go to our social media feed on Twitter. Oh, it's now the last. Is to, yeah, it's the last. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we have, I can see you enjoying yourself. Before we we've, start. We've run out of time. <laughs> this is to do uh, one, some of the uh, key reasons, uh, the rationale for this on the policy objective, of mm. course, was to uh, boost domestic yes. um, mm. revenue uh, yes. and widen the tax base. Mm. So my question to you is if you can give us just very briefly short-term and long-term projections mm. of this uh, property tax law in that regard. Uh, I think it is difficult to give maybe some projection mm. in terms of numerical terms mm -hmm. why this. Most of the properties who are coming on the taxi base now, they need to be valued first. Mm -hmm. I would say they, they will be an exercise to know how much is the value of all these properties that are coming in mm. on board. But okay. we've done on a sample basis. I would say maybe currently between the four to five times this is what we are uh, projecting in terms of the revenue collections. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me avoid to give a certain figure to confuse people, but I would put it in that way. Okay. If we were taking maybe like let's say one kilometer of uh, an asphalt road, you're taking maybe one million dollars, just mm -hmm. an example. Mm -hmm. So for us the revenues were allowing us maybe a certain municipality mm -hmm to do maybe 10 kilometers every year. Mm. Because the revenues are expected to be like increased by five times, maybe we can be doing 50 kilometers instead of 10. Mm. So that's that way. But we have to do the valuation of all the property. These are the projections. There are some who fall under exemption. There are a number of issues that I I'm, I'm cannot say that we have an exact figure of mm. what we expect. And valuations have been going on so far. Okay, the law is based on the self assessment. Yes. Is the owner himself to go and declare what is the value for his property? But the tax administration authority has the right to accept or not accept. Assume they say, I've bought my house at 50 million. You are actually free to go and say, my building is worth 50 million. Then from that one, they take that value. Should they doubt that value? Mm. They commission their counter valuation at their costs. When the difference is actually less than 20%, this they find it's maybe 60 million, mm. your value still holds. Mm. But when the difference goes beyond 20%, and ah, now the new value from the tax authority is the one to be the best. Has, has, is yes. there ever a situation where the value is below? So if somebody overstated the value of the yes, asset, do they that. revise that? Or no, they even say currently, <laughs> they, they practice. Uh. Sometimes maybe for, for those who are, but some people, there is maybe a perception when I go for a mortgage. Some people maybe uh, say a higher value than the real value. For insurance purposes. Maybe yeah. for insurance, insurance purposes. purposes. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to taxation, you give a different <laughs> value. I'm telling you those. Now we shall be synchronizing information with banks, with others. Should you have declared a higher value at a certain level? So, there are a number, it can happen. I'm not saying it will happen, but it's something that can happen. Can, can we you go know, to... Then I just yes. wanted, you, you see, uh, Jonathan raises some, something extremely important around the purpose for which mm. the, the tax base is being widened and these uh, revenues are being uh, collected. This is for purposes of increasing the revenues that are going to these uh, decentralized district. entities. Mm. Mm. My, my direct question is, for instance, let me take a district like Ramagana. Yes. If the money is being collected by Ramagana, shouldn't Ramagana be at liberty to decide what they use their money for? And, 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 and I'll take it a notch higher. If, if, if I stay in, uh, in Rebero, Actually, Onyaza, Charles, that's yes. how it is even currently. It's yes. the local council that approves its district budget. They are the one, they, are the, they have the full right. The difference, actually, this law is bringing in before, like over 90%, it was coming from uh, actually the central, central government central where government. the budget is approved by the parliament. Yes. Now we are reversing the, 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 the picture. Now they have a bigger say on and a big chance. Okay. So, so you, no, no, a bigger say or, uh, or an, entire say, say, an entire say? An entire say. say. So you're not going to go yeah. back to, to no, Gasab no, and Nyaruje and say, 
you're yeah. collecting more money, let's have a oh, bit of it to... Actually, now the yes. citizen is having yes. to request actually their rights. Ah, now we are paying our property, you have for revenues, yeah. implement what we want. Can we, go to, can we go to a social feed? Uh, and our first tweet for this evening is from someone called BG. Uh, and what BG is telling us is, um, and, and you can weigh in on this tweet yeah. from BG. Yeah. BG is saying, I would like to think that this property tax law will help have idle or unutilized land we see across the country. So I think this I person think is so. echoing what, what this is saying. Think so, yes. I, I, I want to disagree with this, you know, and um, uh, people need to understand. I hate the word speculation with a passion. And you tax people and you government people need to understand that investments come in different forms. Yes. Including investment on land. If I decide to invest to buy land, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that I am speculating. It yes, is, yes. yeah, it's not necessary yes. that it's I am speculating. It's because, it's because I am anticipating a gain. Mm, it's yes. the same way that I will go to a supermarket mm. or, or, or a wholesaler, I'll mm. take the sugar man's example, and bring in two tons mm. of sugar mm. and wait, oh, wait mm. and on sell them at X amount per kilo. So do not penalize investors. And that's my biggest issue. We are not with penalizing. Yes, yes. We are saying you, because you decide to make that investment, pay then the pay the cost for that investment. But won't, mm. but won't, that, in, won't, won't that inflate? And I know mm. there's a question around mm. uh, rental income. But aren't we, because you know taxes, what happens with business people? Yes. You implement taxes on a businessman, mm. he will then transfer those over to the final consumer. Aren't we, aren't, aren't we creating a, cent, a certain level of inflation? within the property sector? You see, the market actually, it, it is built on a number of factors, including the one you are saying. Mm. The level of demand of now those actually housing is another element to put into consideration. Mm. Now on the other side, you've talked about the 60% discount mm. on affordable housing. You see, there are, are not affordable there are, <laughs> maybe, maybe they have become affordable. Now there are higher chances, now the people who are renting, are going to those. Mm. So should we decide to increase the rent? Mm. What happens to the demand? Maybe some people change their mind and think of their own houses. So it's a combination of various factors that a single fa a simple factor cannot actually affect the inflation. In but the does that the one of the factors does it include income? Income rising? Of course, the anything that happens in the market affects the demand and the supply. It's, it's obvious. Mm. Um, just very quickly, our next tweet is also again from BG, and uh, BG's tweet is talking about, um, he says, Rwandans are paying little taxes compared to other EAC countries. The only difference here, many people pay taxes, and in our neighbors, few do pay taxes. Reason, reasons for outcry. So this person is actually saying that, and Charles, this echoes, I think, what you were saying earlier on, uh, we, comp we pay little taxes, and this is why this property tax uh, this law was enacted yeah. to widen the tax base and increase yeah. and increase revenues. Yeah, this is. Uh, I think this is really right. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's uh, the, the efficiency, and, and I'm sure I'm sure that's where the biggest outcry is coming from, mm -hmm. because uh, the efficiency of Rwanda Revenue Authority compared to other uh, tax administration uh, in bodies uh, in, uh, in, in many other countries, mm -hmm. ours is, is they're, 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 they're extremely alert. Mm -hmm. So. I know that's where mm. this is all coming from mm. because uh, uh, every penny, every penny will be collected. Mm. But, but yes, to add on a charge, yes. yes. before maybe you add on, also the value for the taxes, every penny you pay, absolutely is there right. a value? I absolutely think that is something right. we should yes, be yes, proud yes, of. Yes, so yes, proud. I think this is another comparison you need to make. Yes, yes. Uh, our last tweet, and this mm. I, it's a bit technical, so I'd like you to answer that, Jonathan. Yes. Uh, and this last tweet is from someone who says that. Um, and, and, and this is directly quoting the law and yes, the specific yes, yes. article. Um, mm. Maurice says that according to this article, a property worth 400 million is the same as one worth 5 million would be paying immovable property tax as long as both are occupied by their owners. Yes, it is. So, In other words, yes. every Rwandan is entitled to actual once a house are considered as his own residence, whether okay. it is 400 or, or even a billion dollars. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Charles, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I, I, I think the, the, the whole uh, rationale of not uh, uh, penalizing first home owners is uh, extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that, that, that's, that, that is music to our ears. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to talk about something around um, 
uh, the, if the importance of ensuring that everything is in place before we, we, we rush to collect more money. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a practical example. The new law on property tax or fixed assets, I think whatever its uh, uh, detailed acronym is, uh, talks about uh, encouraging high-rise building and people, yes, exactly. people in apartments. Yes. Whilst we still As I have think they know it's fifty percent of the effective tax rate of others would be paying. Yes, correct. Because all four hours should know that. If correct. you build on an apartment of four levels and above, you pay fifty percent of another person would pay pay but you can know. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is extremely commendable. Yes, yes. Uh, However, mm -hmm. we still have significant gaps in the condominium law. Mm whereby its implementation and actual issuance of condominium, condominium titles is still a huge walk mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to trek. Mm. So I, I, my, my, my message is, and uh, Jonathan, you, you mm. mentioned earlier on that you follow the square quite a lot. Yes, we like talking about uh, institutional coordination. Mm. We have rushed to, to tell people, come and build apartments mm. whilst we are not ready from a legal pers perspective, perspective yes. to actually uh, have people uh, right. have their condominium titles. And while on that, yes. um, and this is our last tweet, and I think it ties in also to do, I hope this is something we're ready for. Uh, this hmm. last tweet is from someone who's asking, um, he's called Miniga, and he says, his question is, uh, thank you, The Square, for a very informative mm. discussion, but his question is, are free hold titles that were issued before 1994 still valid today, or the new land center issued papers nullified them? Uh, I'm not sure what or why should they be valid. Before I, 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 I think I, I'm fairly conversant mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. There was a, a land registration exercise and a, and a, and a mapping exercise yes. that was done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mapping exercise, they did physical plans and there were aerial maps that were taken. Mm -hmm. Now, there were, there were errors because uh, not all that was on ground was captured by what was taken by the aerial photographs oh, of what was there. Okay. Now, uh, of recent, that has been merged because they took the aerial pictures and went physically to actually verify. Mm. Now, those who, everyone who had freehold titles, all they needed to do was take the land registration number to the land center or the mm. bureau at the sector level, or whoever was in charge, mm. and they would immediately get a freehold title. Oh. Yeah, so and, the, and the, well, yes. yeah, while we're on the topic of freehold title, this mm. is our last tweet for the night, and this particular tweet is asking for an, a slight um, ex, ex elaboration on, on this. He says, this is Vincent Mugabo, who says, can we elaborate more on the requirements to get freehold titles? Also, what are the figures involved in the new tax law? I think in the interest of time, we won't answer both questions, but again, this comes to the freehold uh, requirements and the, There is a number of conditions and it depends on actuate. You can summarize so, yeah. it for, for, for So, him. for example, the residential, maybe one of them, yeah. you need to have rented actually your land, you need to have paid uh, land lease regularly. Mm. Then if there is actually for residence, you should have constructed it, you get occupation permit, and then from that one, there is a process. So, it's a number of procedures you have to follow that uh, maybe uh, I could indicate to him from, from any which, website. Which institution did they go to? It's the municipality, local government, okay. actually. Any website, the one-stop center, they provide I, I think also this information is available in the Rwanda Revenue Authority website. And don't traumatize them. It's not uh, a difficult yeah. process. Mm. It's a very yeah, it's easy just process. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the information is out there. It's, a, it's there. Okay. Yeah. So I think we should be looking at these institutions mm. and the websites that offer this yes. information. Mm. We're coming to the end of our show, and uh, mm. I would like us to give closing remarks on this topic. Mm. Uh, it's, it's very informative, but very dynamic. Mm. And we might have to have a part two uh, of this, especially in terms of informing mm. our public yeah. on it. Uh, from a policy perspective, it's very interesting and mm. also um, very valid points yes. in terms of the journey yeah. this country is making. Yes. Charles, I'll start with you on brief I, closing I, remarks. Yes, uh, briefly, my, my closing remarks are really around the, the, the work that Jonathan and your colleagues whom you work with, whether mm. that lands or communication or municipalities or different entities, the work that you need to do in terms of communication. Definitely. Word on the streets is that property taxes have increased to a level that they are no longer affordable, whereas that is not the case. It is not. And it's so also being implemented yes, progressively. Yes. Mm. Now, even the implementation is mm. progressive. Yes. How many people know these mm. things? So there's a lot of work mm. that you guys need to do, and mm. I'm glad that, well, the Square mm. is very elitist mm. in mind. 
it just be one tip of the yeah. iceberg. Mm. But there's really quite a lot of work that you guys mm. need to do. Yes. And, uh, and, and I hope, uh, my mm. hope was that you, you, you could have given yourselves mm. one more year because I realized that 31st of March 2019, people uh, will have started paying according to the new regime. Uh, the deadline has uh, the moved deadline. to December. That will 2019. be December 2019. December 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So That's this is information great. that, is, mm, that yeah. needs to be mm. constantly, I yes, think, yes, uh, yes, shared yes. with the public. Yeah. Ephraim? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to talk about the things I've been talking about from the beginning of the show. Yeah. I think um, the idea of increasing the tax base is a must. Again, it, giving our districts that authority and giving them the, fin the financial um, capacity to carry out some of the work that they need to do is absolutely critical. We need feeder roads, we need better um, drainage power systems, we need power grid upgrade. There are so many things that can be done and mm. when you miniaturize them and decentralize it, mm. it, 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 it increases the efficiency and yes. actually um, improves the implementation strategy. Mm. But I still believe that beyond that, mm. the, the, the way we are going about it, I mm. feel like has not taken into consideration things around land that are possibly 50 years in the future. Mm. Um, and I think, because again, we are one of the highly densely populated nations in the world, meaning that land is not as available or mm. to everyone as we would mm. like. So we need to be a bit mm. more cautious and a bit more strategic with mm. what we decide as our, our strategy in trying to increase our tax base. Mm. And also looking long term. Long term, you're talking mm. six decades, seven decades mm. from decisions mm. that are being made today. A hundred. Because these, 100, are, things that, yeah. these are things that at, 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 as our country mm. grows and now as our systems become more robust, mm. you need strong foundations. Mm. Mm. And this is a foundational uh, mm. This is a foundational thing. This is something that we mm. can't just wake up after mm. 20 years and say, let's change it. Mm. Because there'll be so many things we'll have to, mm. to change. It now becomes preventative rather than, it, be, rather, it becomes a cure rather than a prevention. Mm. Yeah. Jonathan? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. First of all, I take the recommended the points by Charles and maybe Ephraim uh, for being aggressive in terms of informing the public on what it is about. Secondly, People shouldn't be scared of this. We have a government that works for its people. It is considered their concerns, most of them, they are actually addressing the law, only that maybe they need to be explained. Pure, all the, most of the concerns, this law has taken three years during the elaboration and approval process. So all the three years we're discussing so many issues that I believe that's the best we can get and the concerns are being addressed. So we are going to continue uh, explaining to the public through various ch channels. We thank uh, Square for this opportunity. We hope part two is coming oh, yes. back soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Definitely this uh, part uh, the Lastly, <laughs> is actually the, there is a value for this. Let's support this country. This is our country. Yeah. Its development lies on us. So we are the one to take it forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I'd just like to reiterate, we, we had a show here. You remember the, the income tax law uh, yeah. and the increase. It, there was also a lot of uh, you know, public reaction saying, but where, why are we widening the tax base? Is the tax base a reflection of, you know, a real reflection of, of taxpayers in this country? But the long term of it is to do with the fact that uh, we are really on a journey of self-sufficiency. Yes, yes. uh, yeah. It's going to be a bit difficult in the beginning, yeah. but the ideal is that we want to move as a country yes. and fulfill, to get to our vision, yes. uh, basically. So it's, it's very interesting to hear that. Yeah. Um, we've come to the end of our show. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we are here talking about the new property tax law. There's probably going to be part two of it, uh, as government also works hard to inform the public yeah. on the rationale, the reasons, and the projections and the impact yeah in terms of um, development and self-sufficiency as a country. Please keep the conversation going using our Twitter hashtag, the square RW, and also keep the conversation going, uh, writing mm. to us on our social media platforms. Thank you very much. I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank our partners, Uzi Collections, as well as Bourbon Coffee. Thank you for joining mm. us and have a good evening. <laughs>